Alrighty folks, working on the blazer again today. Uh, in the past video, we replaced the steering box. This is my 04 blazer. We replaced the steering box because uh, it needed one. And uh, it's been needing one and I chanced the fuel pump and got lucky on that when it failed. Don't want to chance the steering, so replaced it. When I was in there, there, I still have a little bit of play left, and uh, so what we're going to do today is replace this. This is a Lairs coupler, number 205. This is the uh, steering coupler on the steering shaft that goes from the steering column to the gearbox. So, for exactly... It's called a steering coupler, it's also called uh, some flange, I forget it off the top of my head right now. But anyway, as you can see, it's a piece of rubber and it dampens the steering a little bit. This is how that works. So, the old one is original, it's riveted on there, and so it's 18 years old. Yeah, 18 years old. So, this here is a replacement. What you do is you take the steering column out, cut the rivets on the old one, push them through, and then this one comes with two bolts with lock washers, which we'll also put Loctite on there. But uh, you bolt this one on and shove it back into place. All good to go. Now this is an 04 Blazer, like I said, and uh, this works on, as far as I know, a lot of the older GM vehicles i don't know about any other ones but uh, the gms especially the uh, obs style and newer this is an 04 so i'm assuming this covers a great number of years but uh yeah so if you have if you've re replaced everything else on your steering system and you still have a little bit of play uh, i'd recommend changing this coupler so we'll get to that right now on this vehicle Get the steering shaft out. All I have to do is remove the air intake, air box, and the air intake. So, uh, if you don't remember, on the video with uh, the steering box, there's two connectors you got to remove, and you can loosen this uh, hose clamp on the air horn rubber slides off there's a 10 millimeter bolt and then it'll slide off there's two rivets up here two little plastic rods that you have grommets on that gotta slide off besides that should slide right slide right out of there now it'll give us enough access to the steering shaft so we'll remove this first so uh, screwdriver and a 10 millimeter bolt nut Okay, so first off I want to apologize, it hasn't been windy all day and it's starting to get windy and it's getting freaking cold too, but anyway, let me get down in there for you so you can see, so if you see right here, there's a little plastic cover, you get a pair of needle nose pliers and there's two little clips kind of that go through the other side, you just pinch those and push it through you can get your plastic off it hooks to the one power steering line right there now I'll give you access to the coupler uh, so we can unbolt that and remove it alrighty so my steering wheel doesn't lock for some whatever reason at least I've never had it lock so uh, put your seat belt through the steering wheel, keep it straight, okay? That's how you can also lock it in. Then, 
come in here, covers removed. Right there, it's kind of green in color. There is a 11 millimeter, you need 11 millimeter in a bolt. Right there, that's the locking bolt, okay? So it, it not only crimps down on the coupler to hook into the splines on the gearbox, but the bolt, there's also, there's a uh, groove in the input shaft of the gearbox and uh, that bolt going through the coupler prevents it from pulling off the gearbox and you losing your steering. So, that bolt needs to come out and then we can pry that off gingerly, collapse the shaft, get it out of the way and pull the shaft completely off. Just ever so gingerly. Alternate sides. Get her loose. And you can get your hand down in there. Bigger bar, bigger pry bar. And, uh, a little leverage and shaking. Tripod's in the way. Might have to move you. Just like that. So now, pick up on the shaft. And there we go. There's one steering shaft. There's a boot up there that comes over this. But as you can see, this one's a there's a good bit of flex in that. So, yeah, we'll cut these two rivets and uh, punch those rivets through and then we'll bolt the new one on. Alright, so, a couple things, sorry, it's, I, I first off, clean the workbench off, so we got a workbench to use, but, uh, I need to do some better shop lighting, and uh, the GoPro isn't the best for zooms, getting in close to stuff. So, you'll get the idea of it. Anyway, you can't see nothing. There are the two rivets. Okay. We're gonna, the ones on the top and bottom are the ones we're going to cut off. Can't really get to them on this side easily with the grinder I have, so we'll get the junk out of the way and then try to pound them through. If not, I'll drill them out or something. But uh, yeah, so those top and bottom rivets are the ones we're going to cut off. And uh, hopefully the stuff comes off. We'll use my Milwaukee angle grinder. I need to find the handle actually.
but uh, yeah, we'll use that and cut them off. Something to flammable to catch the sparks. Now we'll cut the rivet off. You get the idea. I'll work on this and come back with the cut there. Okay. Nothing's on fire. But, uh, we'll want to be like fire watch here for like the next hour. Make sure nothing does catch fire. This is pretty smoky. But uh, old one's off. I just cut the rivets, tops. Beat it off with a hammer. Now we're left with this, and uh, I'll try to beat it through. If not, we'll have to cut them off and just beat the ends through. But uh, yeah, so I'll find a socket that'll fit in there nice for me to give it some persuasion, if you will. And now my nice clean desk is all dirty again. Sometimes I question cleaning because, oh no, we're just dandy. After 10 seconds, it's back to be nerdy. So, shall be a socket there. Don't know if that's a working or not. But, uh, let's try the big sucker. What size is that? It's a 13. Fifteen, maybe. Try to add for size. No. So, all right. We're just gonna have to cut those flush, grind them down so they're flush, and then we'll punch them through the punch. That should do the job. Put these back. We'll come back to you. Okay, so we got these cut off. Just gonna punch those through. We'll attempt this again using the socket. It'd be really nice if I had help or a bench was. But I don't have either, so. Do this one. Attempt to do this one handed. Either way, you get the gist. Well, uh, I'll get these pounded out and uh We'll go from there. Okay. Learned something. Had to get, uh, need to, I need a bench vise. Like, bad. But uh, we got her done. I held the rod in the socket. And I called my mother. She came and helped me beat the, on with a hammer. But anyway, next order business, put the new coupler on.
Take your lock nuts off. Shove them through. I'm gonna take I don't have red lock, I don't think. Or do I? Oh boom! Some red Loctite, not the big jug I was looking for, but... Bone dry. Don't know why that was in the toolbox. This looks uh, brand new. No, it's not. Never mind. Again, red Loctite, heavy duty, in a blue tube. So, confusing. Poke it with a push pin. And on those bolts. Oh, yeah. Nice dosage of the red lock time because you don't want these coming loose. And then on top of that, you will put the supplied. Nylon lock nuts on, and then cinch your down toit. I don't have my ratcheting wrenches, they're in the work truck. to it but uh yeah we will mark the nut and bolt Just so we can see if anything comes loose. Cause this is steering component, so it'll do. And then I'll show you better outside. Yeah, I'll just show you outside. So, we'll go put this back on the vehicle now. That's the plan. Okay, so, we are ready to put the shaft back in. All you have to do is slide it back on the steering column. Make sure the boot goes on nicely. Now, you want to be able to access this bolt. So, we'll put it back on. We will, it's going to go on that way anyway. But, if you look inside here, there is a flat portion in the splines. And on the gearbox, there is also a flat portion on the splines, on the input shaft. So, those line up together to line your steering wheel up. And I colored it with paint pen, so my blind self can see it a little better to line things up. But, uh, yeah, so, we'll start by inserting it, lining it up with the steering column. that it'll collapse 
and we can insert slide the steering ball what just fell something fell oh the uh, wiring harness flew around anyway that will line up and slide right on Okay, this has gone on way easier than the old one did. Just give it a shimmy shake. If you need to, you can put a pry bar on it and tap it with a hammer. That's how I got the old one on. This one's actually going on easier, so. This one. That's as far as it's going to go. So. Grab the claw hammer because it's closer than the ball pin. It's all the way on the workbench. Show you a long pry bar down in there. And screw the few little love taps. She's on. Nice and tight. So I can't see with you there. Looks lined up. I forgot the lock tight. I'll go get some lock tight. And I'm betting any money this is a different size bolt too. Okie dokie. So. I'm going to use the blue Loctite for this. I think it's under less stress. A nice coating of blue Loctite. And of course, like I said, it's a different size. I was right. It is. You need a half inch. Tights on there, so now gotta put your cover back on, which is easy. Here's a better look at it. it. Goes on this way, this goes over the power steering line, and then these two little clips go in there. I think this used to be molded together, but it's cracked apart, but it still works. My steering wheel might be a little off, so I'm just going to go get it aligned. We'll have to see. What you have to do for an alignment anyway. It's been a bit. Okay, that's in there. Just need the air box. Okay, so the air box is a little bit of a pain. Not bad, but if you remove the fuse box cover, I'd find it easier. And then uh, work around this in this upper red hose. So, slide at the bottom, you see there's a little horn thing. So you slide that down, it goes into the lower fender, well, inner, the core support, rad support. Slide that in there around the battery post, right there. 
on the fuse box and then you can push out on the upper radiator hose get that started and then a little more on the rad hose and then push it over and you can slide it around that hot post on the fuse box lift up on the front slide it forward line it up there's two dowels that you gotta slide the grommets on spray those with some uh, White lithium grease, fluid film, PB blaster, or whatever, and it makes them slide on real easy. Because remember, lube is your friend. Lube is your friend. And make sure your wiring harness is out of the way. Slide that back on the air horn, like so. The clip for the main harness. Slide that in there. Clip it. Hooks in there, hooks in there, plug this one in, plug this one in, tighten up your clamp, nice and snug, so you don't have any vacuum leaks, air leaks. Cover back on the fuse box. And lastly, one ten millimeter nut. There you go. It's one new coupler installed in this case on an 04 S10 Blazer. Uh, I know these work on a lot of different GM vehicles and possibly other vehicles with similar style steering systems. Uh, but yeah. So, went pretty smoothly, I think. So, uh, definitely a uh, do it yourself job you can do at home. And you don't need really any special tools, just a pry bar, some wrenches, and a grinder, and a punch and hammer. But, uh, yeah, and uh, Rock Auto. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but uh, I was looking around for a coupler. They wanted like 60 bucks on Amazon. It was $18 on Rock Auto. And uh, only my second time using them. And so far, I'm not going to say impressed. But uh, I'm indifferent. They're, they're pretty good. And they give you magnets. So, you know, magnets and stickers always make things better, right? Well, that's it. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more. You can follow me on social media. It's uh, K30Crazy on both Facebook and Instagram. And as I end all my videos, stay crazy and have a good one, people.